Hey, hey, War Saints, Father Chris here. Welcome to our Crucifixion live stream. Glad to have you beautiful people with us. I'm walking around in the backyard today because I'm spending this day not working, but with my bride at home. And I wanted to, I know you guys hear me talk about my beautiful girls all the time, my wife, my children. Um, I'm very blessed. And I, I, I tease them, of course, because it's fun um, and they get a kick out of it. But really, I want you to know my my wife, my marriage is amazing. I'm very lucky. Um, I do not deserve her. I watch her walk through life with all of its challenges, with just an unbelievable grace. And, you know, the way she cares for me, for my children, for our home, our life. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, I'm bragging. And I'm bragging because it's a thing. And so I was thinking about her this weekend. We traveled, you know, for a quick uh, trip to our family in California. And I was watching her. And I was like, holy cow. This is an amazing person. And it made me think that in this tumultuous world in which we live, you know, uh, marriage is really under assault. It's, and, and here's what I mean by that. I mean, many people are married, but it doesn't carry the same traditional values that it used to. Um, it, it's one of those things that you don't have to be married, right? Like in other words, people have relationships without the sanctity of marriage. Um, lots and lots of divorce, unfortunately. People um, abandon, you know, relationships. I know that there are people, you know, men who just leave. And it happens with women too, who just leave. Um, you know, and it, it's one of those things where the traditional values of it also have, uh, you know, been under assault, i.e. homosexual unions and that kind of stuff. And it, it's, it, it also, interestingly enough, takes a little bit of a, gets a little bit of an attack from within uh, Christian communities in the sense that there's this growing movement that the celibate life is more important or better than the married life. And while being celibate and living a monastic life is certainly beautiful, I, I take exception to all of these assaults against the concept of marriage because I live within a, again, I'm bragging, forgive, but within the context of a beautiful marriage. I mean, it's awesome. I love it. It's not perfect because I'm not perfect, and nor is she perfect, but nevertheless, it's amazing. And I don't want to sit back and just let that kind of assault against marriage, you know, get out there. And so Greg and I were talking, we're fighting about ideas, and we said, what are we going to talk about today? And what are we going to talk about this week? So we decided to make marriage the concept or the topic of the week and, and how to do it right, how to do it as a warrior saint to the best of our abilities. Um, to do that, I need a couple things from you beautiful people. Number one, don't hesitate to uh, comment. Tell us a great marriage story or, or how about this? Tell us the best marriage advice you were given. Don't be a shy. Don't worry. There's no good or bad. Just tell us the best advice you were given in your marriage. Uh, number two, be familiar with St. Paul's epistle to the Ephesians, in particular, chapter 5. Uh, pay also attention to his first Corinthians, particularly chapter 7. We're going to use these texts throughout the week. And the idea that we've got to keep in our mind, and I'll end here today with this because I want to leave it out there for you. The, the proper way to do marriage is crucifixionally. You're going to see that tomorrow when we talk about St. Paul uh, in Ephesians chapter 5. Marriage often gets... Um, in today's day and age where everything seems to be so self-focused and self-centered that it becomes a tool about uh, a transactional relationship, a tool about what can I get out of it. And the proper way to do it is what both parties are sacrificial, crucifixional. That's when it works. I say this, listen to this one, I say this to all my young couples as, they, as we marry them in our church that look, if you do what I tell you and, and the way you know Paul guides us and the church teaches us, if you do it, if you live you know, within the context of an Orthodox Christian marriage, you won't have a good marriage. And their faces go blank and I say, you'll have a great marriage. Like I do, right? Because both my bride and I try to be sacrificial in the way we live. So we're gonna go after it this week. What I need from you today, two things, number one, Make sure you're familiar with Ephesians, particularly chapter 5, 1 Corinthians, particularly chapter 7, and comment below. Let us know what's a great marriage story you got with some great marriage advice. Maybe we'll, uh, you know, be able to address it. We'll definitely try to comment back and, and you know, create a dialogue going. But let's get it. Let's get after it together. I mean, help us, right? I, as I said, I have a good marriage. It's I'm not perfect. Um, my bride is not perfect. I'm standing under the tree. There's a bird. I don't want to get him on my head. Um, <laughs> I'm not perfect. I got a great marriage, but I can learn from you too. So let's have that conversation. Love you. We're going to be back tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday to keep talking about marriage. Until then, you beautiful people, keep walking on the way of the warrior saint.